Hi guys, my name is Okoro Blessing and Kiroka, and I'm popularly known as Blessing CEO, your number one relationship therapist in Africa. How are you guys doing? It's Thursday, and I thought I should drop a little bit of information for you guys. So if you're lucky enough to be on this live video, I want you to pay attention. There is one biggest mistake most of you make in a relationship and I want you to pay attention. Nobody dates you. For love. Everybody. Everybody. Is dating you. For benefit. So, I quickly want to do you guys a gentle reminder, especially the women. Nobody sees you and want to date you because they love you. People date you because of benefits. I'm going to explain. When people see a beautiful, when a man sees a beautiful woman, he sees potential. He see a smart woman. He see a woman with shape. He see a woman that can speak well. For every time people see you and want to bring you into their life, there is something they want to benefit from you. Benefit is not always about money. Benefit could be the things you have to offer people. It could be sex. It could be anything. So learn to put yourself first. Did you hear what I said? When people get involved with you, be it a man, be it a woman, they are not coming into your life because they love you. They are coming into your life because they have seen a benefit. Benefits can be compliments. Somebody can see, ah, this person can help me in this way. Ah, this person can compliment me in this area. Ah, this person can do this for me. That's why they want you. Nobody comes to an empty vessel. There is nothing like you are a nobody. Many people are using you because you have not understand how useful you are. Do you hear what I said? Many people are still using you because you've not understood how useful you are. Nobody is useless. You are not useless. You know, whenever people hear about benefits, they always think that benefit is when you have money. That's a lie. It is rich men that use poor men anymore. No matter how poor you are, you are beneficial to somebody. But the difference between a poor man and a rich man is that a rich man understands what they can give. A rich man understands their usefulness, but a poor man does not understand their usefulness. That's why they always tell you that poverty is a mindset. That's why it's so easy for the rich people to use the poor people. Because the poor people already feel useless. So it's very easy for the rich person to pick you and use you. If you think you are useless, why are you working? If you think you are useless, why are you doing houseboy? Why are you doing house girl? Why are you a receptionist? Why are you a megad? Why are you somewhere? If you are useless, people throw you away. So long as people are using you to do something, there's a usefulness inside of you. So you need to learn to put yourself first. Oftentimes, most of you always think that when people come into your life, they are coming to do you a favor. Now, this video, I want to do you a gentle reminder. Nobody comes into your life to do you a favor. Everybody's helping one another, no matter how rich people are. Life is give and take. Nobody goes to where they do not see benefits. Be the man be the woman now on this video i just want to remind you that you should learn to put yourself first don't always think that people are doing you if you don't think that people are helping you no put yourself first when you put yourself first you begin to understand what is called your ability some of you do not know your ability because you're always thinking that people are coming into your life to help you they're not they've seen something that you've not seen 
some people see your potentials even before you see it. You don't know. There are some of you that think that you are useless, but some people have seen the usefulness in you. That's why they are using you. Sometimes you're always asking yourself, why is it me? Why does this person like to stay around me? Why is this person still keeping me? It's because there's a usefulness inside of you. They're not helping you. That is what it means to put yourself first. When you put yourself first, you begin to understand how useful you are. I just want to use this video to tell you that you are not useless. There are some of you that feel that a man is helping you in a relationship. There are some of you that feel that a woman is helping you in a relationship. That's a lie. That's a fat lie. No matter what you look like, there's a benefit. Before somebody said they want to be with you, there is a benefit. Relationship is not that hard. Relationship is the simplest thing you can get involved in. But I've said this before in a couple of my videos. The most difficult thing about relationship is that when you get involved in a relationship, you leave yourself. You forget yourself. You drop yourself. You hate yourself. And start to feel that it's about the other person. That is the most difficult thing about relationship. Relationship is not hard. You make it hard by abandoning yourself. So when the person abandons you, you don't know where to start from. When you get involved in a relationship, be you a man or a woman, you are not supposed to leave yourself. Because that person saw you and wanted to date you. So you are supposed to continue to grow you. Because if that you does not grow, the person will leave you. I've said this before in a couple of my videos. Relationship is about you. So when you leave you, what do you expect the person to be living with? The person will abandon you. Relationship becomes hard when you abandon yourself. When you want to give the pe people the things you cannot give yourself. That's where relationship becomes difficult. That's why you see that when a guy leaves some people, when your boyfriend leaves, it's as if you want to die. You cannot die. The only reason why it always looks like you want to die is because you abandoned yourself. You don't know where to start from. But if you do not leave yourself in a relationship, when people leave you, you move on. Yes. Women like us are not tough. The difference between you and I is that I don't leave myself in a relationship or in marriage. When you see women like us, you think that we are Jagaban. We love. I love. But while loving, I don't leave myself. So when I love people and they go, I can always move on because I still have myself. It's when you leave yourself, that's when moving on is hard. Because there's nothing else you have. You don't know where to start putting yourself together. You're broken. That's why I want to do this gentle reminder to those of you who are in a relationship, to those of you who are in a marriage, let me tell you something. If people do not appreciate your efforts, they cannot appreciate your tears or your blood. Did you hear what I said? If people do not appreciate your efforts, they can neither appreciate your tears or your blood. It simply means even if you kill yourself, you will not say appreciate it. But if, but if people appreciate your effort, every little thing you do will count. You know the craziest thing? Let me shock you guys in this relationship drama thing. When you are in a relationship with somebody that does not appreciate your effort, they won't even notice when you are doing something. When you are in a relationship, when people don't appreciate you, even when you are doing something for them, they will not notice. So sometimes, I used to ask many women, how do you people stay in a relationship where you are not appreciated? Because staying in a relationship where you are not appreciated is like pouring water inside a basket. It would never get filled up. 
But when you're in a relationship where you are appreciated, the smallest thing you do will count. Small thing you do. The smallest effort you put in will count. Let me tell you something. Eh? When people don't love you, there is nothing you do for them that is enough. But when people love you, the smallest things you do for them is enough. Do you hear what I said? When people don't love you, there is nothing you do for them that is enough. But when people love you, the smallest thing you do for them is enough. Nobody dates you for love. Everybody is dating you for benefit. Before I date a man, I have my list. I want a man that is established because I don't want a liability. I want a man that has gotten to a certain level of his life because I don't want to, I don't want him to be a burden on me. I want a man that has gotten to a certain level of his degree. I don't want a certain burden on me. I want a man that has a certain level of exposure. I will marry for benefits, not for love. Benefit does not mean money. Benefit simply means I am calculative in what I want. It's only small, small secondary school girls that date for love. You don't date for love. You date for benefits. It's a long-term thing. This beneficial thing you are looking for, you are looking out for yourself. Because if you don't date for benefit, you will die. If you don't date for benefit, you, you'll be, the person will become a burden. If you don't date for benefit, you become a liability. It's a win-win. A man would date you because he has seen something. Why do you think every man is looking for an independent woman? Even a rich man is looking for an independent woman. It's not because he wants to collect your money. It's because he doesn't want a, he doesn't want a liability. It's because a man understands what it takes for a woman to be independent. If a woman is independent, she will not disturb me. If a woman is independent, there's a level of mentality she has. So when you begin to mature, you begin to date for benefits, not for love. People who are dating for love, go and ask them how their life look like. Benefit simply means you are asking, what are you bringing to the table? That's the meaning of benefit. Benefit, just like when somebody brings a business proposal to you, the first thing you're going to ask is, what's my benefit? Why do I have to invest? If bankers come and meet you and tell you to come, and, the first thing is the benefit. What am I benefiting? The same thing as relationship and marriage. There must be benefit. There must be a long-term thing. This girl must have gone to school. This girl will be from a certain home. This man might have gone to school. This man has gone to, gotten to a certain level of his life. This man has potentials. This man has all it takes. That is benefit. Because these things you are looking out for is what your children are going to live on. If you are building a future, you must be concerned about benefits. Except you're not going anywhere. Marriage is not about sex. It's about benefits. You look at this person. Hmm. Because when you marry a useless man, it moves to your children. Your children will be useless. When you marry a useless woman, it moves to your children. So you are going to have a bunch of useless generations. So you need to look inward. Benefits. Where is she coming from? What has she been doing all her life? You meet a woman, she's 35. She does not have anything to show for it. So from the day they gave birth to you to 35, what have you been doing? You need a man, he's 35. He does not have anything to show for it. Your curiosity would have been, what have you been doing with your 35 years? Let me see your struggle. Let it be that you've been doing something and you failed. What have you been doing in your life? That I'm loving you for who you are. Why would I love you for who you are? You're 35 years, what were you doing? Because this man that is telling you to love him for who he is, if you were not prominent, if you were not good looking, he will not love you for who you are. Why is it that all those poor men cannot go and love poor girls? Why is it that poor women cannot go and love poor men? Why can't the poor love the poor? Why does the poor look for rich? It simply means everybody is looking for somebody that is doing something, that is working. So while I was busy working, what were you doing? I need to know, at least before I love you. Benefit. 
So if you're getting into a relationship, you need to be very strategic when it comes to your thinking and your reasoning. People who marry and date for love are old schools. A cake people as old school. Nobody marries and dates for love these days. You marry and you date for benefits. What are you bringing to the table, sir? What are you bringing to the table, ma? Is vice versa. That's why everybody wants to go to school. Everybody wants to put in effort. Women are working, men are working. So that when we meet at a particular point, we understand what we are bringing to the table to each other. Gone are those days when a man will see a small girl and start paying her school fees. That's, that's old school. So to those of you who want to date for love, love is just a static word. Love does not exist when there is no benefit. Benefit simply means the person can do something for you and you can also do something for the person. Benefit must not be monetary. Benefits can be potential. There are some people that don't give you money but they have contact. I have somebody that does not have money to give me but one phone call everywhere don't open door. The fact is, where do you want to go to in this Nigeria? I have a friend that I will call and he just calls somebody. If you are in Togo, he has Togo contact but he doesn't give me money. Benefit. So if you continue dating for love, people will continue using you, dumping you, and draining you. What did I say? If you continue to date for love, people will continue to use you, dump you. Mm -mm. People will continue to use you, drain you, and dump you. People only keep things that they benefit from. Did you hear what I said? People will only keep things that are beneficial to them. Nobody keeps liability around them. It is only things that are beneficial that they keep. Somebody will save your contacts because they are going to need you one day. If you are useless, nobody's going to keep you. When you have this at the back of your mind, you're going to work hard so that you can be beneficial to somebody. What is the meaning of important? Important simply means this person is beneficial to me. This person is more useful to me. It's very easy for you to trash people that are not beneficial to you away. Very easy. Yes. Even in your family. Let's bring it to our families. Our families. If you are the firstborn and the lastborn can provide more than the firstborn, you become your parents' favorite. Is a subconscious thing. Let's bring it to the Bible. Come. Do you know why many of you are worshipping God that you have not seen before? Hold on, guys. All of you that are shouting, Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of God, in the name of Allah. Have you seen him before? You never met Jesus. Neither did you meet God. You only read him in a book that you met somebody who Do you know why many of you are worshipping God and worshipping Jesus? Benefit. It's because you have heard that Jesus can help you. It's because you have heard that God can bless you. It is the benefits that come with worshipping God that is making you go to church. Ta! Consider there. That is why it looks like when you are in trouble, you are loyal to God. But when you get that thing you are looking for, you become a rebel. Benefit. If God cannot do anything for you, you will not worship him. If God cannot save you, if God cannot give you life, if your prayers are not answered, you will not worship him. Benefit. Let people stop deceiving you. This life, I give and take. Even the God that you worship is the benefit of worshiping him that is making you go to church. You're going to church because you know that when you go to church, God will bless you. If nothing will come out of church, you know go go. Yes. Benefit. So let nobody come and tell you rubbish. 
I see somebody in the comment section writing, blessing, I disagree with you. What are you disagreeing? Benefit can be sex. How many men want to help you without fucking? Even if a man helps you without fucking you, but something is benefiting from you. Maybe you are intellectually sound. Maybe you have connection. There is something somebody is benefiting from everybody. Nobody is giving you anything free. Nobody wants to be your friend because you are fine. I lie. Make money now. That's why it looks as if success have family and friends. Make money. Be successful. People will come around you. They are coming around you because of the benefits they are going to get from you. The day you begin to understand this, I'm sharing this secret with you because many of you need to set your priorities right. This so-called love, 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 love have gotten most of you into trouble because you go there expecting somebody to give you what you cannot give yourself. See the problem with love. When you get into a relationship or a marriage, you are expecting the person to put you first. That is always the situation. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't call me. He doesn't visit me. Now, the problem about relationship and love is that you enter there expecting somebody to leave their self and put you first. When they don't leave their self and put you first, you are heartbroken. But I'm trying to tell you that you don't need to leave yourself. You are number one. Whoever you love is number two. And somebody is telling me, I disagree with you. You don't need to agree with me. By the time you get your heart broken and get your heart messed up, you will agree with me. This is a factual statement. You always want people to leave what they are doing and call you. He was... No. When you have this understanding, your mentality will change. You will not be expecting so much from people. You are number one. They are number two. And because you are number one, and because you understand that people are around you because of benefits, you are going to work hard. What is making you work hard? Because you know that people are beneficial to you. you are, people are benefiting from you. The moment you can no longer give them those things, they go. If you're a man, the moment you can no longer provide for your family, you go see whether, whether love no go fly, come out for window. Even your picking, don't pay your picking school fees, respect go reduce. So a man is working so hard because he knows that he has a lot of beneficiaries. He needs to put up his responsibility. That's what makes him a man. That's why he's working. That's why a smart man is going to put himself first because he understands that it's provision before love. You don't put love before providing because you understand that the moment you can no longer provide for your wife, that love is going to fly through the window. So a smart man will put work, will want to make money before I go and start in I love you, I love you because he knows that when he has money, love, love, love will surround him. Some of you are not smart. Some of you are foolish. That's why when people like us are talking, you're shouting, you disagree. That's the reason why your life is messed up. Because you do not know what to prioritize. You don't know what to put first. You need to put some certain things first and every other thing will be added onto you. If you put love first, you're going to get messed up. Everybody who have put love first, go and ask them how they are like. They are all the people that are crying on Instagram. You don't put love first. You put yourself first. And when you put yourself first, you ask yourself, a lot of people are going to be benefiting from me. Let me work hard. It is the benefit that drag them to you. A lot of people don't want to be my friend. They just want to be my friend because of the benefit of blessing CEO. People who didn't like me before now like me. It's not because anything happened. It's because I grew. That's the reason why as you grow, your friends want to increase. As you get to the limelight, your friends want to increase. Because as you are growing, there are more benefits attached to your name. That's it. If you don't grow, people will not want to be your friend. It is benefit that makes people flock around you. And it is that same benefit that gives you value. If people know that they can benefit from you, your value will be increasing. What is value? Value simply means this person can do this thing for me. That's valuable now. You know, English is hard sometimes. And when we get to use this English, we don't understand. Value simply means this person is beneficial. This person is useful. And people hardly throw things that are useful away. If something is useful, they hardly throw it away because if you throw, another person will pick it. So you need to be conscious enough as a human being not to allow somebody to useless you. 
Because the moment they use less, you, they will throw you away. So what you are going to be doing as a human being is to make sure that nobody use less is you. You'll be refilling your container. If you are a perfumer and somebody spray you, you refill. Because you understand that the moment you become a container, you are thrown away. That is where you take care of yourself. That is where you come in. That is where you put yourself first. So that you don't go empty. So that anybody that comes into your life will still have something to spray. It is that thing that they are spraying that is making them stay with you. If you're not beneficial, you can't have friends. If you're not even beneficial, your children will never respect you. You need to be able to train your children and give them a better life before they can call you mommy. It is responsibility on your kids that make you a mother or a father. Mommy is just a bloody title. Anybody can answer mommy. Even your pastor's wife is your mommy. Don't you call your pastor's wife mommy in the church? Motherhood, you earn it. And your children call you mother because of the benefits they got from you. Your children call you father because of the benefits. You train them through school. And that's respect. When people benefit from you, they respect you. You command respect. That's why they say you don't ask for respect. You earn it. And the easiest way to earn it is benefits. It is your beneficiary that respects you. Yes, your staff, your people, people that get things from you. Somebody can destroy you. Haven't you heard this word when somebody gets to say, are you feeling me? It is people that benefit from you that respect you the more. You don't know. Uh -uh. People give you a certain level of respect because of the benefit they get from you. Yes, you don't know. Why do you think everybody is dragging for power? Why do you think everybody wants to get to a certain position? It's because you want you to have a lot of beneficiary. It is those beneficiaries that are your aides. When you have boys, or when it's so simple you are giving money, not you are giving 5,000 your beneficiary. What are you talking about? I think English is the problem for a lot of you. A lot of you lack understanding. You need to drop love. Drop love inside the dustbin. Love does not exist without benefit. Most of you have never gotten anything good in your life because there is nothing to benefit from you. People only use you because you are not useful to yourself. You are always looking for love, always searching for love. You will never search for love if you're beneficial. Love will find you. What is love? Love is benefit. Somebody saw something in you that can compliment them. That is love. This love that is overrated is benefits. And so long as you improve yourself, people will love you. What is the difference between Okoro blessing at 20 and Okoro blessing at 32? Growth! People now benefit more from me than when I was younger. That's why it looks as if people love me more now. I now have a fan base because of things they benefit from me. You are not following me because you like me. As well. You are following me because of the things you are learning from me. You think I don't know? A lot of you don't like me as a person. You like me because of what I offer you. You like me because of what I say. You like So you are not liking me. You are liking me for the benefits. The mo if I don't do a video for one month, my followers will reduce. That's what is called content. If Netflix don't put any movie on Netflix for one month, we are going to look for something else to keep ourselves busy. If DSTV don't put out something for one month, you are going to look for another thing. If Insta blog does not post for one month, we'll go to another blog. So we don't like Insta blog. We like the benefit of Insta blog. You don't like Tundi Head Nuts. You like the benefit of Tundi Head Nuts. It is benefits that make you stay. So nobody is going to love you for who you are. Go and walk. For those of you that want to love me for who I am, nobody can love you for who you are. Go and walk. Because even you that want someone to love you for who you are, you cannot love another person for who they are. Everybody is looking for content. Because it's when you benefit from somebody, that's when you can add to yourself. Everything I know today, I was not born with it. I benefited from somebody. I read a book. I watched a movie. I learned from experience. I met somebody. I dated somebody. Benefits. 
What I'm teaching you today is what I benefited from people, from heartbreak, from divorce, from different things in my life. So when we're telling you about love, some, some people are telling me I disagree. What are you disagreeing with exactly? What is love? If I ask one of you to come on this live video and define what love is, you don't know what love is. Love is just a static word. Without benefits, nobody can love you. Why do everybody want to have a child for Davido? Benefits. You know when you carry Bele for Davido, your child um, destiny is secured. That one is sure. If you born for Davido right now, Davido accepts your pregnancy. You trust your you're picking don't they made. Your child is not going to suffer till your child die. Benefits. And that is why Davido have to continue working hard because you understand that once the benefit is no longer there, all these women will run. Benefits. Why do everybody want to marry Dangote? Marry Ned? Marry Tudela? Benefits. So what are you saying? Benefit is what makes you important. So today, you need to go back to your drawing board and ask yourself, what can people benefit from me? When you are able to answer that question genuinely, you will now find your value. What did I say? Go to your drawing board after this, my live video. And ask yourself genuinely, what can people benefit from me? When you find it, you would now understand your value and your worth. People say I brag. I don't brag. It's because I know the benefit I'm giving you. I am proud to say I will block you from my page because I know I'm giving you something. What are you talking about? That's why nobody can come and tell me I'm your follower. You're not doing me a favor. You are following me because there's a benefit. What are you talking about? So it's not bragging. Some of you who don't know your worth is because you don't know what you are giving people. That's why you think they are doing it. If you know your worth in a relationship, eh, and somebody messes up with you, you pick your bag and you leave. Some of you don't know your worth. That's why you allow a man debase you. You allow a woman debase you. When you understand your worth, eh, if somebody wants to play with you, you pick your bag and walk out. It is what that makes you walk when somebody wants to take you for granted. It's when you don't know your worth, you'll be doing shme, 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 shme. Uh, so you must understand your what and the easiest way to understand your what is by asking yourself what do people benefit from me when you understand what people benefit from you you have now found your power it's a gift what do they like that's it that's, that's value Some men cannot leave their wives, not because their wives is the finest, is a benefit. Their wife is not giving them money. But there is something their wife is doing that they know that, ah, I'm benefiting from this woman. Some women cannot leave their husbands because of benefits. Forget all these things women are saying. He's beating me. Domestic A lot of women are not in domestic violence because of their children. They are in domestic violence because of benefits. Have you not noticed that a woman gets very hostile and rebel when a man withdraw all the benefit from her? That woman that is telling you, eh, I'm in a domestic mar violent marriage because of my children. Let that man withdraw the benefit from her and see whether she will not leave or she will not rebel. That woman that you're thinking is calm, she's not calm, she's only calm because of the benefits. So when a man wants to shut a woman up, he uses money to shut her up. You don't know. A lot of women are still with cheating men today because of benefits. When the benefit goes, you see that they can walk. They are not crippled. They know what they are doing. Nothing like, I don't know how to leave him. I'm in love. Now lie. And our benefits keep them there. We draw benefit from a woman and see that she can walk away. I cannot walk away because of my children. Now she has me. You cannot walk away because of your children. But when the man throw you out, you will go. When the man takes accommodation away from you. Some women are still even staying with men because they don't have accommodation. They don't know where to go from there. That's all. Benefits. But when the man takes the accommodation from, from them, do they used to die? They don't use to. Maybe they will still go. So what are you guys talking about? When people come and tell you, I cannot leave because of my children. I'll just be laughing at them. When some people come to my office and tell me, listen, I cannot leave because of my children, I laugh. Don't leave me out there because you are still benefiting small, small change from the man. That's why you see it's easier for a woman to leave her marriage when the man stops giving her money. 
When the man stop having sex with her, when the man stop coming home, you see that she'll go now. Huh? Women. So women are still in those marriages because at least the man is still even dropping chop money. She's still staying in a very comfortable apartment. The man's house is still fine. She still has smoke out to be driving in the man's name. And so men, women are still married to their husband because of the contacts their husband have. Because when you are married to a particular man, there's something that comes with the man. Let's assume you're married to Dangote. You can imagine the kind of respect you'll be commanding and the kind of connections you have because of Dangote. If it's you, you really want to leave Dangote. Because you understand that the moment you leave Dangote, all those things that are attached to your name is gone. It's like being a queen. So some people would rather die being a Rotodola than leave because there are lots of benefits that comes with marrying Rotodola or Dangote. So people don't stay in situations because they can't go. They are there for benefits. Everybody's there for benefits. Yes! So by the time you think about the things you're going to lose, you say, oh, let me stay. Oh. <laughs> let me stay and be crying inside Lamborghini <laughs> instead of going to start crying inside Keke. So what am I trying to say on this video? It's time to look inwards, okay? And um, make sure that when you're getting into a relationship, <coughs> make sure that when you're getting into a relationship, it is beneficial. Don't get into a relationship or into a marriage blindly or because of love. Love is just a static word. Love is meaningless. It is benefits that give it a meaning. Love is sweet, oh. When money enter, love is sweeter. The video always sing that song, in get sense. Love is sweet, oh. When money enter, love is sweeter. So nobody should come and deceive you that you should come and love them because of their poverty. If you are working on yourself, if you are working to better yourself and grow yourself, the man you should marry better be working on himself to better himself. If you're working on yourself to better yourself, the woman you should marry better be working on herself. So if you meet your wife or you meet, ask them what they have been doing all their life. Nobody should come and stress you. Nobody should come and stress you. I am 32 years old and by the special grace of God, I have done something with my life. You that is 32 years old, I know that grace is not the same thing, but at least show us something. Show us efforts. Show us that you have at least been trying. You were not sleeping when your mates were working. So, benefits, very, very important. So, nobody should come and use love and tell you, love me for who I am. Oga, you are a nobody without benefits. Madam, you are a nobody without benefits. Don't disturb us, please. Don't bring down your emotional black mate. Come and say, love me. Who are you exactly? Can I use your name and enter bank? Or can I use your name and go and buy Gary? Or go and buy rice in the market? Oga, please don't disturb me. Don't disturb me. The country is very, very hard. You know, I say, my love me for who you are. Ask me. Will I use your, is your name check? You will go. Can your name open door? At least when you enter somewhere and say, I'm a last wife, door can open. You won't come. Love me for who you are as who exactly. Or can go and walk. Madam, go and walk. You need to love me for who I am. You know, allow us to hear what? Emotional black me. That is who I am. Who are you? Nobody. I know you here because. So with this viewpoint of mine, I hope I've been able to convince and not to confuse you that nobody dates you for love. Everybody's dating you for benefits. So you need to put yourself first and up your game. Thank you so very much for coming up on my live video. And uh, we're going to do this some other time. I'm going to quickly take questions. I always take two questions on my live. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and ask me. And I'll just take two questions before I go. <clears throat> two questions before I go. Two questions. I'm going to quickly take two questions. You're welcome, guys. Somebody said, how do you know your worth? I told you, the easiest way to know your worth is to ask yourself, what can people benefit from me? That's how to know your worth. You measure your worth based on the benefits. What can people benefit from you? 
that's how you know you want so it's very easy so go to your closest ask yourself what can people benefit from me why is it that some women feel threatened by a woman's achievement why is it that some men feel threatened by a woman's achievement men do not feel threatened by women's achievement boys feel threatened by women's achievement you must be able to differentiate between a man and a boy a man is that person who wants to carry responsibility so when a man comes into your life he's going to look beyond the things that you have a man is going to look at the things you have to offer a boy is going to look at the things that you have so if you have somebody that is intimidated by your success is a boy is not a man a man does not look at what a woman has because he's making something it's only people that don't have him it's just like now M. it's only a poor person that will see you take picture in front of your car and say you are posing with car it's only a poor person that will see you hold your car key in your hand and say you are bragging with it if you have a car and somebody holds a car key you will never feel intimidated most people who feel intimidated when they see you holding a car key are people who don't own cars poverty so when a boy comes into your life and is intimidated by the things you have, it's because he's not doing anything. If a man is walking, he cannot be intimidated by it because he's doing something. He will be more excited by the things you have to offer, the things you want to bring to the table. So some of you are dating boys and mistaking them for men just because they have a manhood. Manhood does not make a man a man. There are lots of male children flocking around you thinking they are men. Some of you are dating small, small boys. You're not dating a man. A man does not even get freaked by what a woman has. Because he has. If you have a car now, I cannot get intimidated by you having a car because I have a car. The person who will be getting intimidated is someone that does not have a car. That's why me as a person, as I grow, I leave a particular circle. I have some friends in my life I don't want to grow. I cut them off. There was then one of my friends coming and was telling me, Blessing, you just abandoned me. And I was laughing. When she was talking, after she finished talking, I dropped the call. I never called her again. I don't call her. Why? Because that my friend refused to grow. She just sits down and says, Oh, bless me. So you don't turn celebrity. Send me 10K now. I get irritated. This is a girl that was very intelligent in school. This is a girl I used to copy from in school. And she just feels relaxed. And started feeling entitled to my money because she feels that I'm a celebrity. But she's intelligent. I cut her off. I don't stay around such people because from that thing is going, the day I don't have 10k to give her to turn envy. Bless you down the form because she be celebrity. Ordinary 10k where I beg and she no forgive me. So I don't I'm not friends with such people. I am friends with people who have my kind of mentality. People who are going to where I'm going to. I'm not I don't like keeping small minds as friends. When I keep small minds as friends, they begin to envy me over the small things I have achieved. If I have two houses, I want to be friends with someone that has five houses. Most of my friends are not my mates. I like to be friends with bigger people. It makes me think bigger. Yes, most of my friends that I have more than are probably friends I knew far back from school. But the friends that I have made now are far higher than me. I like to make higher friends. That's me. Because I don't want someone setting me back and coming to tell me blessing. You remember when we you don't want to grow and you don't want me to grow. You remain there and let me grow and pass you. So I think I've answered the both question. Um, I think I've answered the both question. Is there another question you guys have? Any other question? I'm trying to see if I can get an important question. Somebody said, how do I put myself first? Hmm. From the kind of questions some people ask you, you see that a lot of people are really ignorant. What do you mean by how do you put yourself first? Okay, let me answer the question. No question is stupid. 
the easiest way to put yourself first is to prioritize yourself that thing that you want to give a man give it to yourself the lady that asked me how do i put myself first let me illustrate it with a man everything you want to give a man give it to yourself some of you women have so much you want to give men you cannot give yourself and some men have so much they want to give women they cannot give themselves so all those love all those time all those energy you desperately want to go and give somebody give it to yourself because some of you don't even have time to take care of yourself but you want to go and take care of a man some of you have not even developed yourself but you want to develop a man some of you don't have businesses but you go and borrow money to give a man to start business not be movie that that's what it means to put yourself first stop giving people things you do not have stop looking for who to love when you can't even love yourself you must be enough for yourself before you now want to share because for every time people come into your life for you to love them you want to share the things that you have but some of you don't even have anything you go there and share your life then you die you need to be able to build yourself so much that when somebody comes into your life there is SS that no matter what they take they can't drain you now let me tell you something about me I have so much love in my heart to give that there's nothing you do that drain me you know why I'm a convenient lover I don't put myself in a corner and I don't stretch myself to love I do the things I want to do because I want to do them not because you want me to do them that's how I love so no matter what I give in love it doesn't take anything away from me away from me because it is convenient I don't stretch myself I don't I don't do past myself in relationship or marriage it is that do past yourself that you will do and the person does not reciprocate that is the bitterness I am never a bitter woman, but I don't do past myself. If I give you this can of malt, it's because I want to give you. Or because I have two. Or because the malt is not hungry in me. I will not be thirsty of this malt and give it to you. Lie, lie. I'm not that kind of person. Or I will share it. But I'm not that kind of person that do love and give you malt to drink. And I'm thirsty. God forbid. If I don't share this malt, is that I have two other in my fridge. If I don't have two other, I don't want to drink malt. So, even if I give you this moth and you don't appreciate it, because I, I, I know I'm not hungry. But some of you want to give this whole moth, yet you are thirsty. Just like the men that will take a girl out and be chewing onions, yet Suya is hungry in them. That is stupidity. No. Stop giving people things that you do not have. Share. I've told you this thing before. Share. You can't be giving somebody so much love, yet you don't have love inside of you. That's madness. So, me as a human being, I have trained myself to be a convenient lover. I cannot come and see you if it's not convenient for me. Except maybe you are sick. And when you are sick, I might not even come because I'm not a doctor. If you are sick, the highest I can do, if I have money, I will send it to you. Or if I have a doctor, I will refer you to the hospital. Or if I have a driver, I will send my driver to pick you to the hospital straight because I am not a doctor. So you might even be sick, I might, not, I might not come immediately because at that point, I might not be in a situation to help you. You know, most of you don't know how to love. Why will I be running to where you are when you are sick? I'll be doctor. So I'll come there and come and start crying. No. When you are my lover and you are sick, the highest I'll do for you is if I have it, I'll send the doctor to you. Or I'll send my driver to take you to the hospital. I love conveniently. I don't love stupidly. That is how I love. So that's why no matter what you do, it doesn't take away so much. I don't give all of me. I just share the little part of me. And I used to tell many people that I love, there is more from where this is coming from. Somebody told me one time, bless you, don't you think you give so much on the internet? I said, I've not even started. People tell me that all these things I'm saying, on, I should monetize it. I say people who monetize everything they do are people who are afraid of running out of content. I'm a spring. I can never run dry. I'm not bragging. What did I say? I'm a spring. I can only be afraid when I'm fetching my water from somewhere. And I'll be afraid that, ah, what if this borehole no open today? But because I'm a spring, I can't run dry. So when people tell me, bless you, monetize your content, you are giving too much on Instagram, I said, I'm not. There is more to where this is coming from. In the next hundred years, I cannot run out of what to see. Out of, so long as it's relationship, sex, and marriage, never. Is a gift. So that's why 
when people want to compete with me, I laugh. You can't compete with somebody that is a spring. Because my water is coming from somewhere. So w- when you are copying somebody, be careful. Because you, know you don't know the person's source of inspiration. If you want to compete with blessing now, or you want to, you want to do what blessing is doing, you're going to miss road because you don't know where my inspiration is coming from. It's a gift. If you wake me up in the morning and ask me anything about relationship and marriage, I'll answer you. I eat it. It's like food. It's a gift. I don't even need to read book. Because I hardly read people's book. Like, when I do research on the internet, I do my research because I want to hear what other people have to say. I, I do research based on I want to go into other people's head. So when I finish doing my research, I see, okay, this is the way this person sees this. This is the way this person sees And I bring it from a different perspective. Personally, I, as a coral blessing, I don't like to say what people say. I don't like to do the things that people do. So I watch people a lot and want to do it differently. So you need to be able to love yourself enough to be able to love somebody else. That's the easiest way to put yourself first. Be selfish with your being. I had to learn it. I was not born like this. I learned it. And I learned it the hard way. And I'm teaching you for free. A lot of who did not teach me these things I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you for free because I want you to be better. Love is not that hard. Somebody said, okay, is this the journey of a girl? Jenny Rice. Is she the news? And she said, if you've never experienced love in your life, you will definitely believe that love does not exist and will remain your own problem. Okay, is it this Jenny Rice that has been disturbing us? Now, when you listen to somebody like Jenny Rice, you will see that somebody like Jenny Rice is a daft. And a daft is somebody that does not think deep. A daft is a shallow thinker. And when you see dafts like Jenny Rice, you don't pay attention to them because they are small children. People like Jenny Rice, life always teaches them a lesson and it teaches them bitter lessons. Yeah. So leave people like Jenny Rice. Life flogs them very, very well. And people like Jenny Rice are the ones that end up in Babalawu. Uh, they are the desperados looking for somebody to. Uh, they are the ones that end up in Shiloh when they are 55. People like Jenny Rice. Uh, so most of them are dafts. They are shallow-minded people. So when you see such people, you just walk past them. Don't stress your head. They are just babies. So you're not even supposed to start having arguments with them. You're not even supposed to start bantering words with them. Because from her comment, you see that she's a baby. She's just a small child. And such people, life has a way of flogging them very hard. People like Jenny Rice end up being motivational speakers. I'm telling you the truth. You guys need to see me when I was young. I was stubborn. I'm not stubborn again now. Who are you to talk to me when I was when I was young when I was younger? When I was in my twenties or when I was fifteen? Who are you? My mouth was sharp. Tell me not to pursue man that time, I will finish you. Tell me anything contrary to love, I will finish you. Eh? Me that can speak English. And Nami don't turn motivational speaker today. Nami don't turn relationship expert today. I never knew I was going to counsel. I thought I was gonna be an actress. I wanted to be an actress. Because I was wild. I was a crazy girl. I was, I was an interesting person. Life humbled me. Life taught me a lesson. I never knew I was going to sit down on Instagram and be talking to people. I wanted to be an entertainer, an entertainment. I wanted to be an actress. Messi John C. Them. That was me. That was the dream. Life humbled me. Life brought me to this path. So when I see small, small girls running their mouths, Life go humble all of them, go touch all of them. But the thing is, some of you might not be lucky enough to survive it. That's just it. So a lot of us actually take our time because some of you might not be lucky enough to survive it. So when you see people like Jenny Rice, I think she just wants fame. And I think I've been able to give her that fame that she wants. So Jenny Rice, you got your five minutes fame and I hope you're happy about that, right? I gave her the attention. I know she wants attention. That was why I made her. A topic so I just want her to enjoy herself once in a while you just make people happy so I knew she'd been craving for attention since my live video so I've given her the attention Jenny Rice you can arrest your pickles mm.
you know you need to see people who insult me on my comment session you need to see them on my dm you know just a relationship therapy is um is district that's why sometimes i don't take them seriously if you see them on my dm they the humble now i'm telling you so my point is when you're on the media don't get distracted by what people say a lot of people are hypocrites they say this and do that and i'm a kind of personality that people don't want to associate with publicly but they want to associate with privately what i do and what i say are what people don't want to own up to um, publicly but they want to own it up in their private in their closets <laughs> i have a lot of personalities as clients you might never get to see their comments but privately they don't play with me i'm telling you the honest truth and um i'm happy they might live in denial in public but you see private they don't play with blessing If anybody is talking about me somewhere, listen to what they have to say. That blessing is everything but. If there's anything people respect me for, sorry about that, I'm having a cold. If there's anything people respect me for, is the fact that I'm not that intelligent though, but I know what I want. And in this part of the world, if you know what you want, you're not going to have a lot of friends. Because people want to come to people that they can control. If people can control you, they will be, you have plenty, plenty friends. But if you have a, a mind of your own, you might not have too many friends. So I'm a woman that have a mind of her own. You cannot control me. If I like you, I like you. If I don't like you, I don't like you. So, um, any other question? Any other question? I will. I had to put up the ace in the office. Somebody said she asked the question. What's your question? She said, I said, if a man tells you to get pregnant for him first before he marry you, is that true love? Any man that asks you to get pregnant for him before he marry you want to use you. That's not love. Love does not come with condition. Let's turn the table around. Let's turn the table around. Give the man your own condition and see if you can also meet it. Love is not conditional. The moment somebody starts telling you, before I do this, I will do this, it's not love. Childbirth is not conditional. When a man is telling you get pregnant, they always make it look as if you are the one to impregnate yourself. And when a man is marrying you because he wants a child from you, then that's not marriage. Kukuma just be his baby mama. People marry you because of companionship, not because of children. That's why in so many marriages, as soon as you finish giving birth, you and your husband does not have anything in common. The only thing you share are your children. If a man is marrying a wife, a man is supposed to marry you because you are his companion, not his baby factory machine. Children are just plus in a marriage. Children are like paints. Children beautify marriage. It doesn't make marriage. What did I say? Children beautify marriage. They don't make the marriage. Because these children will come and they will go. They make the marriage beautiful. But they will still grow. These children will still grow up and go and make families of their own. These children will still leave your home to go make their own home. So children is not marriage. It is still you and your wife. It is the companionship of old age that makes you want to get married. So that when these children grow and live, you are still with your wife. So marriage is not about children. Children just beautify the marriage. So anybody that's asking you to have a child for him, that is the beginning of the comma. You're not a baby factory machine. So my dear, I know a lot of you women are very desperate. And you will do anything for marriage. But just have it at the back of your mind that this is a red flag. So that tomorrow you will not come and start blaming God. So 
Somebody said, because of you, I now believe that one must not have a PhD to be intelligent. The most intelligent people might not even go to school. Let me, let me quickly define the meaning of intelligence for you guys. People say, I'm intelligent. You know why people think I'm intelligent? I'm not even as intelligent as people think I am. Funny enough, there are some things I don't know. If you ask me things about football, if you ask me things about Nigeria, I don't know. If you ask me the deputy governor of my state, I don't know. Intelligence simply means when you're a deep thinker. A lot of people that you call dull don't think. They are shallow. An intelligent person is a depth thinker. That person that wants to... Why is this thing like this? You think like this, you reason, you reason. Some people don't reason. Some people, their lives are just based on what they heard, not what they know. If you ask people now, why do you want to get married? They don't know. You will hear them say, I, some people want to get married because they grew up understanding that once you are 20, 25, you will marry. Some people want to get married because their friends are getting married. So those people are not depth thinkers. They are the follow, uh -huh. we are depth thinkers. That's why it looks like we're intelligent. A lot of people don't have personal reasons why they want to get married. They, only, they grew up to hear about marriage and they just follow the norm. But people like us, we try to understand what is this, this, this marriage self? What's it happen? Some people don't even want to think beyond that, this thing. Uh -huh. That's intelligence. Some people are afraid to think. Some people are afraid to reason. They are so scared. That's intelligence. So, intelligence is not PhD or book. No, it has nothing to do with that. All those ones, if you are doing PhD and book, it's just for, it's just for formality. Because a lot of things in PhD, you know, even when I was doing my master, when I was doing my, sorry, not my master, my professional course, I was the most favorite student of, of the lecturer. The white woman, she liked me because I sounded, I was the only one who had experience. Like, I was the only one who was very vast when it comes to communication amongst everybody in that class. She liked me. And she was like, where did you get all this knowledge from? I told her, experience. I'm not afraid to act. I'm not afraid to learn. I'm not afraid to think. I'm not also afraid to implement. You know, I have, I have programmed my mind to this point that... Let me tell you how a coral blessing works. I have programmed my mind to this point that... I want to die for something. Every day I come on Instagram, I see one death or the other. You can wake up any day and you will die. So, I as a Koro blessing, I don't want to die for nothing. I want to be remembered for something when I die. Have you ever noticed that whenever you die, everything you've done in your life will start to trend? Have you noticed? When you die, people begin to dig up the things that you have done. Now, do you know why it's so easy for us to forget so many people that have died? Because they did not do anything. So it simply tells you that when you die, people will raise your legacy. You can live on when you die by the things that you have done. Because the moment you die, people begin to trend the things that you have done. I want to die and there's a lot of things to trend about blessing. It's called legacy. I want to die. And there are countless videos that are going viral and saying, Eh? You mean this guy said this? That is a coral blessing. I don't know about you. I want to die and still be remembered. I want to live on. And the only way you can be remembered when you die are by the things that you have done. People will see what I have done and bless my children. People will see what I have done and bless my generation. It's called legacy. That is what I'm doing. That's why I don't get tired. 
That's why I don't get bored. That's why I'm passionate. That's why I'm here every day consistently back to back. It's because I'm not just here for clout. I'm here for legacy. There should be an endless topic about blessing CEO. If you are talking about this one, another one will come up. That's my dream. So you get to see that we dream differently. That's why we have... I don't just want you to trend me once and I'm gone. Some people, I see some people die and there's nothing to trend about them. Maybe you just see one beautiful picture that they snap and that's all. But when you leave a legacy, it's just like Michael Jackson. You can still play Michael Jackson's music and still have good... It's just like Fela and Ibula Kuti. They live on. For every time you play Fela's music, you see Fela, you remember Fela, you go to get good bombs. For every time you play Michael Jackson, that is what is called legacy. I still watch some local and I smile. So we all have different dreams. We all have. Who is that? What is that? Is that light? You should collect what? Which token? Hold on, I'm coming. So guys, I think I have to end it now. Every point in my office, I think they want to check my meter.